الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم My dear respected brothers and sisters We are still studying this beneficial book The explanation of the aspect of the days of ignorance By Al-Imam Al-Mujadid The Reviver Al-Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah Explained by our noble scholar and elder Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan al-Fuzan, may Allah preserve him. And the Sheikh is explaining the second aspect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn and the human and mankind except that they should worship me. That's what Allah said in Surah Al-Dariyat. Ayah 56 All of the creation, jinn and mankind Are obligated to have only one religion Which is Tawheed And singling Allah out for worship Worship has been explained upon the tongues Of the messengers, peace be upon them Its meaning was not left entrusted to the people Rather, Allah revealed the book to us and sent messengers to us. And he said, this is the religion. And this is what worship is. Worship is based on revelation. And this is very important because some people, they innovate in the religion. And uh, when you ask them, where did you bring this from? They say, well, the sheikh so-and-so He gave us this. But they don't bring you any source from Kitab or Sunnah, nothing from the revelation. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Because anything that you bring that is not in the Kitab and the Sunnah, it will be rejected. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever doesn't, whoever introduces in this affair of ours that which is not from it, he will have that action rejected. The Sheikh he said, and the religion is based on revelation. It is not a right of the people that they prescribe religions for themselves. And this is a refutation that goes against those people of Tasawwuf. Those who actually in, introduce into the religion that which is not from it. Like for example, Adkar. Adkar. And they take ayat from the Quran. And they say, well, you're going to say this hundred times. Or this one a thousand times. Or this one you're going to say. This, this is all bid'ah. This is all innovation. Because if it is not in the kitab, it is not in the sunnah. It is not permissible to act without knowledge. You have to have knowledge and you have to have proof and evidence from Kitab or Sunnah. So if there are none, then that action will be rejected. Rather, this is from the right of Allah. The right for, of Allah to legislate, not the right of the ibad, the servant. He is the one who ordains the religion. أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاءَ شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنْ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَأْدَلْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or do they have partners with Allah who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not ordained? See, this is the danger of what? Bid'ah. The danger of bid'ah, innovation. Because when the innovator says this is halal, this is haram, this person is lying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And basically, this person, he is legislating. Because when you say, this is halal, this is haram, where did you bring this from? You have to have proof and evidence from kitab or sunnah. Al-haram is what Allah deemed haram. Al-halal is what Allah deems halal. Not what the people deem halal, haram. No. 
if they have, if the people have a proof and evidence, yes. If he refers this matter back to the Kitab and the Sunnah, yes. And what, that's what the scholars do. Because the scholars, they look in the evidence of the Kitab and the Sunnah, and they say, you know what, this matter is halal. There's no problem. And this is haram. Because we looked at the evidence in Kitab and Sunnah, and we found out that it is haram. This is ilm, this is knowledge. Because it is based upon revelation. It is based upon revelation. Kitab was sunnah. Not based on desires and whims, what the people feel like doing. It doesn't work like that. We have to have proofs and evidence from kitab was sunnah. Allah is commanding the act of others legislating a religion apart from his. So the religion is that which Allah has legislated and revealed in his books and on the tongues of his messengers. On the tongues of his messengers. Because the revelation is either Quran or Sunnah. Either Quran or Sunnah. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was given the Quran and the like of the Quran, as he said in the Hadith. Inni utitu al-Qur'ana wa mitlahu ma'ahu. I was given al-Qur'an and the like of the Qur'an with it. The ulama, they say the like of it is the Sunnah. The Sunnah is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except that the Qur'an is the recited revelation. The Qur'an is the recited revelation. What does that mean? We recite the Qur'an in the Salat. But we don't recite the Hadith in the Salat, do we? We don't. So the Qur'an, Al-Wahi Al-Matlu. The Qur'an is the recited revelation. The Sunnah is not, the, it is the unrecited revelation. Unrecited revelation. And the difference between the Qur'an and the Hadith is that the Qur'an, both the, the literal, the words, and the meaning are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The words of the Qur'an and the meaning are both from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Hadith Nabawi, the prophetic Hadith, the prophetic, prophetic saying, The words, the meaning is from Allah. The meaning is from Allah and the words from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why we say, qala Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. The Messenger of Allah said. And that's why the scholars, they said, it is permissible to relate Al-Quran with meaning. To relate the Quran with meaning. For example, you don't know, you don't memorize the hadith. You don't memorize the hadith. So you can quote that hadith with the meaning of it if you don't know the wordings. So you say the Prophet said the meaning of which, but you don't quote the hadith because you don't know the hadith, but you know the meaning of it as long as you don't. Uh, change the meaning of the hadith then you can but you cannot do that with the Quran you cannot do that with the Quran you can't say Allah said the meaning of which La. Quran you say it as it is Allah said, said this and that and you mention the, the ayah as it is in the Quran as it is in the Quran طيب. From the differences and the distinction between the Quran and the Hadith, the Quran, in order to touch it, 
according to the majority of the scholars, including the four Imam. The four Imam, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, Ahmed. And many of our senior scholars, like the like of Sheikh bin Baz, Ibn Utaymeer, Salih al-Fawzan, and others, that you have to be in a state of what? Tahara. Tahara means purification. And purification is of two categories, either minor or major. So minor, when you don't have wudu. So you need to make wudu to touch the Qur'an with your bare hand, bare hand. And <clears throat> if you are sexually defiled, meaning you had, you had relations with your wife, in that case you have to make ghusl. You have to make a ghusl before you can touch the mushaf. Likewise, a woman in menstruating woman, menstruating, then the menstruating woman does not touch the mushaf with her bare hand. With her bare hand. But if she was wearing gloves, then she can touch the mushaf. She was wearing gloves, she can touch the mushaf. But not with her bare hand. From the difference between Al-Qur'an and Al-Hadith is that Al-Qur'an, a, uh, Al-Qur'an, a woman or a man who are in a state of um, minor or major impurity, they cannot touch the Mus'haf with their bare hand, but they can touch Hadith. They can hold Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Nasai, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, and other than that collection of hadith, they can hold it in their hand. There is no problem even if they did not have wudu, or they were not, or they they were in a state of impurity. So these are some of the distinction between Al-Quran and hadith Tayyib, we continue. The Shaykh Hafidahullah Ta'ala, he said, therefore, worship is based on revelation. The messengers only convey from Allah. They convey on behalf of Allah that which he has ordained for his servant. This is the duty of the messengers. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them. They adhere to the religious practices of the religion. But like everyone else, they are servants worshiping Allah through this religion that he has prescribed for them and their nations. Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And be not like those who split up and differed after the clear signs came to them. They are the ones who will have a painful punishment. Surat al Imran. This is a prohibition for us from being like the people of the days of ignorance, who split up and differed with regard to their religion. This did not occur due to ignorance on their part. Rather, it occurred due to their vain desires. After the clear signs came to them. So basically the clear signs, they came to them. So now the evidence was established upon them. So they had knowledge. They had knowledge, because it's not ignorance. Nobody can say they were ignorant. They abandoned the clear proofs and instead followed their desires. So that which caused them to split up in this manner was desires. Was desires. And we seek refuge in Allah. They took their desires as gods. Beside Allah. But Allah did not leave room for anyone to make excuses. Since he sent the messengers and revealed the books. That's it. So there is no excuse for anyone on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Nobody can say, oh Allah, you know, uh, I, di- I, didn't, I didn't get the guidance. Yes, you got the guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the revelations. 
and he also sent out the messengers, peace be upon them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Then whenever there comes to you guidance from me, and, and whoever follows my guidance, there shall be no fear on them, nor shall they grieve, may Allah make us from them. But those who disbelieve and deny our ayat, signs, verses, such are the dwellers of the fire. They shall abide therein forever, Surah Al-Baqarah. Look, look at this justice, subhanAllah. Nobody can say, well, you know, Al-Qadr compelled me, like some of the deviant sects. They say the decree of Allah compelled me to do that. Al-Qadr did not compel you. There's no compulsion in the religion. There's no compulsion. Allah did not compel you to do something. No. You, Allah gave you the choice. You either choose the path of Allah or you choose the path of the shaitan. But you, with your own will, because Allah created that will in you. He, cre he, he, he created that will, you know, in you. So you had the choice either to choose the way of Allah or to choose the way of deviation, which is the way of the shaitan. You follow the, your desires, but since you choose the way of the shayateen and the way of, and the way of the the deviation, then you have no one to blame but yourself. So Allah has established the proof against the creation. However, the people of the days of ignorance oppose what the messengers brought, not due to ignorance, but out of stubborn rejection, and the following. And, and the following of their desires. This is especially the case with the Jews and the Christians. Nor, they, for they had full knowledge of that. This is why Allah called them people of scripture. In order to blame them. Because of the fact that they were given the scripture and knowledge. But in spite of this, they opposed Allah's commandments. And instead follow their desires. Allah has forbidden us from treating this path from the days of ignorance. And he ordered us to cling onto the religion that he revealed to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa and which he, his companions and his rightly guided caliphs adhere to. This is the religion that the ummah is obligated to hold onto. Until the final hour is established. And if they differ in any matter, they should re re reference it back to the Quran and the Sunnah. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, then refer it back to Allah and the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you truly believe in Allah and the last day. Surat An-Nisa. It is from the nature of human being to differ. However, Allah has assigned for us the Quran and the Sunnah. As a reference point for when we differ and don't know which one of us is correct. So whoever's view is proved to be true by the Quran and the Sunnah, we accept it. And whoever's view is proved to be False. By the Quran and the Sunnah, we abandon it. This is since our ultimate objectives is to follow the truth, not to support our personal views or to glorify our fathers and grandfathers or our shuyukh scholars. This is not the way of the Muslims. The believer seeks after the truth Whoever he find it, wherever he find it, he accepts it. So the ultimate goal is to attain the truth. If you truly believe in Allah and the last day, that is better. Then you're remaining upon differences and divisions. And more suitable for final determinations. Meaning, the best result will be achieved. This is from the way's mercy. For, this is from Allah's mercy towards us. 
that he has left for us that which will resolve our disputes and show us the truth. This is why he says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ And hold on to the rope of Allah, which is the Qur'an. جَمِيعًا All of you together. Not just some of you, but all of you, i.e. all of the creation in general. And this ummah of Muslims specifically, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَدَكُمْ مِنْهَا And be not divided. And remember Allah's blessing on, on you. For you were enemies of one another. But then he joined your hearts together so that by his grace you become brothers. And you were on the brink of a pit of fire, but he saved you from it. Surat Ali Imran. The brink of a pit of fire. He refers to the religious ways of the days of ignorance. But he saved you from it through Islam and by way of the Quran. So give thanks for the blessing of Allah. Holding on to the rope of Allah means adhering to the Quran. Since that is the, is the extended rope of Allah, which whoever grabs and holds on to will be saved, while whoever lets go of it will be ruined. This is what Allah has informed us concerning the condition of the people of the days of ignorance. That they split up their religion and became divided into sects, each sect rejoicing in that which it has. Surat Ar-Rum. Then he forbade us from being like them and resembling them and then commanded us to hold on to, to hold on to the book of Allah, which is free from differing and free from disputes and ruin. So there is no salvation except by adhering to the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you together. And be not divided. Surah Al-Imran. So the people of the days of ignorance were divided into their religion. Were divided in their religion. As Allah says, each sect rejoicing in that which it has. They were happy with their beliefs, even if they were false. They were also divided in their worldly affairs. Since whoever loses the religion will also lose the worldly matters. So, with respect to their worldly affairs, they were divided and not united as one group. As a matter of fact, each tribe would rule and govern itself. And each tribe would regard the lives and property of another tribe as lawful for the taking and fair game. Subhanallah. This was the state of the Arabs prior to the advent of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at this ni'mah, subhanallah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take, took them out from this darkness into the light. Allah yeah. Allah. Subhanallah al-Azim. When they neglected their religion, they neglected their worldly affairs. So, so fear, anxiety, and hunger became, became permanent. Subhanallah. Look. I'm, I'm going to repeat this. They ne- when they... He said, when they neglected their religion, they neglected their worldly affairs. Subhanallah. So, fear, anxiety, and hunger became permanent characteristic of them. And the days of ignorance were times filled with wars, fighting, and upheaval, fitna. This was even to the point that brothers 
would fight against each other. As was the case with the tribe of al Aws and Khazraj in Medina. They were brothers by way of lineage, originating from one tribe which was from Qahtan. However, there occurred a tremendous war between them that lasted more than a hundred years. Subhanallah! Than a hundred years. Which they called the war of al Ba'at between the tribes of al Aws and Khazraj. And which used to be instigated by the Jews. Subhanallah. But when Allah sent his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he is and he migrated to Medina, Allah caused these battling tribes to unite through him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The war was extinguished and the Muslims became brothers, uniting like one one hand alongside the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what Allah reminds them of when He says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And remember, Allah is blessing on you, for you were enemies of one another, but then He joined their hearts together, so that by His grace you became brothers. Surat Ali Imran. Allah united their hearts through Islam and terminated the wars that occurred amongst them, thus rectifying their worldly affairs. This was also the case with all of the other tribes, the other Arab tribes. When they entered into Islam, their worldly affairs were set aright. When their religious affairs were put in order, their lives and property became secure. And they began to walk through the land with peace. Allahu Akbar. And a sense of security. And it became such that an Arab would meet another Arab from any tribe and not confront him with evil. Rather, love prevailed amongst them. And they became brothers in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Look at the blessing that Allah showered upon them. Allahu Akbar. He sent down this glorious Quran. And he sent down the Sunnah. And he sent to them this messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa This noble messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Umar said, كُنَّا ضُلَّالًا فَهَدَانَ اللَّهُ بِمُحَمَّدٍ Abdullah ibn Umar said, we used to be misguided. And Allah guided us through Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Look at this rectification. What is left now is understanding the meaning of differing, of differences of opinion on the issue of fiqh. Differing occurs and is present in issues of fiqh. Is this the condemned form of differing? We say differing is of two types. The first type, differing in the religion, such as differing in worship. And the creed, this type is, is this type of different is condemned and forbidden, since the religion is not open to ijtihad, scholarly deduction and interpretation, or subject to people's opinion. Rather, the religion is based on revealed text, and so is the creed. So there is no room for ijtihad in it. It is upon us to adhere to what Allah has prescribed for us from the religion. And from creed without causing our opinions and deductions to interfere with. That likewise, worship is based on revealed texts. Inshallah, we're going to stop right here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Any question? No. So, like, uh, so mentioned that we can take the court Musaf with glove on, right? So can you read yeah. the Musaf with the glove on? If you had the gloves on, 
Okay. And uh, you were in a state of um, minor or major impurity, you mm -hmm. can actually open the Mus'haf and uh, thumb through the, you know, the pages and everything because what is not permissible is to touch it with bare hand. Okay. So yeah. can you read it? You can also yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You can read, yes. Do you get the same reward? No, it's not like when someone is, uh, you know, has wudu and things like that. It's different. Absolutely, because wudu in itself, there is a reward in the wudu. Yeah. You know, person makes the wudu and things like that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, just up. Why yak?